I hear you. Texas still belonged to the Comanches. I've been a cowboy all my life. What we do is what we are. I don't know how to do much else. Oh, oh, what a mess. The Oklahoma Overture. You can tell the ones that were very popular are all scratched up. You gotta be real careful with that needle. Oh, that's my grandfather, Stoney. That's me and Grandpa waiting to go into Grand Entry. Must have been a special night at the rodeo. Let's rodeo! In chills and thrills and spills and wild horses, dangerous steers, honorably wild bulls and cowboys, ready to ride for cow town. Hi, this is Bill Weber, along with our Cowtown Rodeo expert, saying hello to you from Cowtown Rodeo, just 20 miles southwest of Philadelphia, right here in New Jersey. Howard Stoney Harris would be my grandfather. Oh, once again, from Cowtown, New Jersey, this is Bill Weber, along with our Cowtown Rodeo expert, Howard Harris. Howard Harris III is my father. You can't ask for anything finer than Cowtown. And I am Howard Grant Harris. Grant Harris getting to be a very familiar face, now with a 59 in the Brahma bull riding. Grant, can you tell us what it's like when you bind yourself to that unpredictable powerhouse? Saddle Bronx is my passion, and I rode bulls mostly because I could. In 1978, my dad told me that I had first opportunity to buy Cowtown. He was selling it regardless of my response, I certainly recognized that I was the last opportunity to keep this in the family. So I thought about it for a while and said, well, what the heck? Saddle Brock! Bareback again! Saddle Brock! Bareback! Ah. Waste! <laughs> Grant Harris is probably the most clean-cut, brutally honest, kindest person you'll ever meet. When I grow up, I want to be a bullfighter. I want to work at the rodeo. I want to live in the same house I am living in now. You have to write checks, and you can stay up as long as you want if you are a grown-up. By Katie Harrison, age 8, 1991. There was days where we would be horseback from 7 o'clock in the morning until 5 o'clock at night working cattle. There's not a lot of girls around here that can say they can do that or they can throw hay bales. My two daughters, Courtney and Kate, since they were little guys, they worked here side by side with me. It was never just, hey, let's go ride horses, you know, let's go on a trail ride. There was always a mission. So it wasn't necessarily something we thought about doing for fun. It just is what we did. It was never spoken that either one of them would take over or that we were grooming them to take over. But, you know, I think in, in your heart of hearts, you kind of hope. I mean, I never imagined that I would leave. Mr. Adams is Jacob Warhead. And then Jake came along, and I was caught up in the whirlwind of, ooh, let's get married, I'm in love. As soon as we got married, we went on a honeymoon and drove west. I had spent 22 years teaching Courtney the trade, and then she went to work for somebody else. The day I took her, loaded her up, and brought her home, I had I was wondering because she was a little teary-eyed. I think I cried all thousand miles. <laughs> <laughs> and then Katie, uh, when she married R.J., R.J. the prince of a guy, but he's an electrician. And I'm saying, okay, that that doesn't help me a lot. I decided I was going to propose to Kate. Uh, 
I had already had it in my mind that I was going to do it and when I wanted to do it, but I got to ask Grant. You got to do the right thing. He was nervous, so I barely could get the words out, but asked for Katie's hand, and I made the comment, what we do is what we are. If he didn't become involved at some level with the operation, that they would have a difficult time growing together in their marriage. How much more shall your father who is in heaven give what is good to those who love him? Do we all love him? Absolutely, we love Jesus. Well, the countdown has everybody tonight. To squeeze in a little bit, we've got a record crowd here tonight. Oh, yeah. By golly, what a rodeo we got in store. The oldest weekly professional rodeo in the entire USA. The Cowboys are ready. The livestock is ready. Are you ready? Say hello to Mr. Grant Harris, owner and producer of the Cowtown Rodeo. Who's ready to rodeo tonight? Cowtown, New Jersey! just be people randomly coming up to my dad. They see all this acreage and perfect place for Splash World. And I remember him coming home one day and I was out working in the yard and he said, you know, we've had a pretty good offer for everything. You know, what do you think? And I immediately started crying. And we would talked about selling. We're, oh, we're going to get out of this business, you know, rah, 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 and always thinking that. And then literally when something came face to face, we just thought, oh, my God. Net, net, net after taxes would be more money than we'd ever dreamed of. The interest on that money would have been more money than we've ever made. Interest. It was nuts. <laughs> what am I going to do with net, let's just say, 20 or $25 million? So told him no. Cowtown, it's its own world. I miss everything about it. So <laughs> sorry. Myself and Kate and Nate, our son, want to be that next generation to, hey, let it go a little further. You know, if you have a family business and you pay all your bills, that's about as good as it's going to get anyway. What does it matter? It, it really doesn't. You put you in the same side box, who cares? If you can pass some sort of legacy on to your children and their children, what's that worth? <laughs> 